Welcome back again today, friends. We are having a massive food preservation day. I'm just thinking about the routines I fell off of in 2020, like always having a lot of different bread going in my bread machines and every day getting my bread machines running. If you're new here, I have years and years of bread machine footage on this channel. And it was just part of our homeschool day routine, honestly, where I would get some bread going in the bread machine. Most days I left my bread machines out. We did it a lot. When we moved to this house, the baby kitchen that came with this house in 2020, and I had to really like work in a kitchen closet, basically. I just did not have room for my bread machines on the baby kitchen counters. And they have been waiting for their reawakening time. For today's massive food preservation video, we have a lot of projects that I'm going to tackle that will equal a full day of all kinds of great projects. This is my thrift store bread machine and then I have my bread man bread machine over there. I bought that bread man bread machine in the farmhouse maybe eight or so years ago, bought it brand new on Amazon, but then I think it was like $49 brand new. Then I got this bread machine at the thrift store. We'll go through the whole origin stories of all the bread machines more later. We are also gonna use my Amish water bath canner. And we have all of these frozen fruits that we got through Azure Standard this fall that have been waiting for their homemade jam time. And today's the day. I also have a little bit of mulberries left that I just threw in the bag from July, 2022. So I'm gonna mix those in with some of these at some point. We also are doing projects today, such as we're gonna do homemade vanilla. I'm 43, I grew up in an alcoholic household. As an adult, I've never been in the liquor store. Sure, growing up, I was in the ABC store with my dad all the time, but we're gonna have to buy some vodka. Okay, okay, ask me no questions, I'll tell you no lies, ha ha. I have these vanilla beans that I purchased on Amazon, anticipating this project. This was also something I got this fall, and here we are now, March 2023, and we are getting to it. I have my kumbacha. I started kumbacha last spring for the first time. I kept it going for quite a bit, but at some point this winter, with the kumbacha that I was brewing, something happened with the SCOBY. I don't know, I went through several batches and it seemed fine. This last one, something happened and I went totally on. My good longtime kombucha brewing friend looked at it and she was like, yeah, I've never seen that before. So you probably wanna get another one. And so if it doesn't pass her test, that's fine, it was out. We're gonna get another one going. I also have some water kefir. Now I've done kefir a few other times. I wanted to try this one, that's some starter grains. And then I also have this complete fermentation kit. All kinds of good hopes and dreams projects. It's noon on a Saturday and Travis and the kids are doing some chicken projects and other household projects. So mama is going at it with this massive food preservation day. And actually the project that Travis and the kids are doing today is I have been brooding some fresh little peeps, some little hens down in the basement. Our weather is still off and on with the hot and the cold, the hot and the cold. Usually if it's warmer weather, once they're a couple weeks old, I like to start putting them out on grass every day. It's just not possible yet with how our weather is bound around but I do have a shed that I have used as a brooding house for chicks in 2020 and 2021 with the time of year I was hatching and incubating last year I didn't actually need it we have hay stored in it so all of that hay is getting moved to another location and all of my several week old chicks are getting moved to the brooding house we're getting that going again and so to get ready to do all these jams this is the Pomona's universal pectin gels with low amounts of sweeteners now I've used this one other time even though last summer I was still in my baby kitchen and I was still working with my push button stove that was down to one burner and then at the tail end Travis was able to get a four burner coil stove top to replace it whole point with that is I didn't have a lot of room to do a lot of canning in that kitchen but we did continue to work on those skills and I did get some more jam canned in summer 2022 so go me go us it was a strawberry honeyberry jam I think we were calling it we had some of our mulberries in it also so that brings me to the point that with all of this canning that I've been doing especially since I'm now in my dream kitchen and I have room for all these big mega massive food preservation products projects. Remember, I am learning and I am sharing my journey as I am growing in these skills 
of doing a lot of big canning. And many of you have been asking what kind of books I use. I have the Ball Blue Book Guide to Preserving. I also have Ball's Complete Book of Home Preservation. I also use the National Center for Food Preservation's website. So out of all of today's projects, like I've never made homemade vanilla, so we're doing that today too. The bread machines I have years of experience with, but it's been about three years since I fired these babies up, so hopefully they still work. We're gonna get those going. I know it'll all come back. I used to be very good about having bread machine pizza dough in the freezer, ready to go for homemade pizzas, and doing homemade cinnamon rolls, doing my doughs in there, doing all kinds of fruit breads and such. So anyway, that's gonna come back. But canning with Pomona's Universal Pectin. I am here reading through many of my directions along with some of you friends, and then of course many of you have been canning for 30, 40 years, and you can tell us through the TV screen exactly what we're missing and how I should be doing things, and I always appreciate so much knowledge in those comments down below. So I appreciate you hanging out with me and growing in all of these new skills. There are many Feed My Family topics that I do know quite a lot about. And again, these new skills that we are adding in. For many years, I had a very small grocery budget, 250 to 300 some dollars a month. So I know how to take a small amount of money to the grocery store and feed my family based on what's in that store. Also combining scratch cooking with that, but using store-bought products bought at the very cheapest prices. And I also have super mega a massive experience with big batch cooking. Travis and I will actually be married 25 years, yay, 25 year wedding anniversary coming up this summer. So I'm gonna say I've got a good 23 years of big batch cooking experience because as soon as I became a mama and before I knew it, I had two little boys, I was in nursing school and then I was working full time as a charge nurse and then we were homeschooling and then life full steam ahead from there. I have been big batch cooking for all family sizes for over two decades. So you will see all of my big batch cooking. Like I can't hold it in. So that's like with this jam, I can't just do a little jam. Mama's got to do a lot of jam. So I was reading that homemade vanilla is good for five to 10 years. So we will see whenever we get there, how many bottles I get out of this. I have heard that spring is a good time of year to do your homemade vanilla because then it'll be ready for the holiday season. Look at us. Who are we? We're ahead. We are making homemade holiday vanilla in March. I don't even know who we are, but we're doing it. We, I also fly a lot by the seat of my pants, but we're doing it. So we're gonna see how many bottles we get out of our homemade vanilla today. So I just wanted to share all of that with you as we get going on today's massive food preservation today, especially since I've given you recent tours of my freezers and my pantry with my canned goods, many of them bought from Walmart over time and rotated through for my family. And now as my home canning pantry is growing. Friends, hold on to your hopes and dreams. Okay, this is my hopes and dreams. I remember when my 13 year old, who's almost 14, I had so many hopes and dreams in that farmhouse, okay? You know, I bought my first little chicken flock there for $75, and I did start some very basic food preservation there as far as I canned peaches, I canned some jams, I did some pickles, I got my ball book and my canner, and we went to town learning there. I also started buying little pieces of cast iron here and there because I was thinking, okay, with a power outage, and we did have several week-long power outages at that property, with a power outage, especially if it was in winter, I could cook on my wood stove because it was big enough that we could actually do some cooking on. I had dreams then to do a lot of the massive food preservation like I'm doing now, and I was baby stepping into it. And part of what, sorry, these spoons, talking spoons, these spoons are our friends. This is actually a new one from the hardware store. This one a YouTube viewer sent me. She said this to me, I don't know, six or seven years ago. It's been a while. This one I recently bought at my little hardware store, and I was like, oh, Look, they have friends now. We have a set, we have a pair, okay. And then part of how my journey twisted and turned and still twists and turns and develops, but something very unexpected that happened within a year or so of that season, I stumbled into this hobby of blogging and I started blogging as a hobby. And about a year or so into that, I was like, okay, I'm putting 15 to 20 hours a week into this. I have to stop this hobby and pick up another nursing shift to increase my grocery budget, or thank you, Lord, that you show me how to increase my grocery budget while doing my hobby of blogging. 
and the rest is history. I've shared a lot about this before, but for the past more than a decade, I have grown something at home that has become more than a full-time business that brought my husband home full-time in 2012. I know so many of you longtime viewers can say this story with me, but it's my story and my food preservation and my pantry and my canning and my bread machines, all of these things are mixed up, are cooked up in this story with me. So I just really feel like I'm coming into a full circle moment because also from that time that this was on my heart with my fourth baby, again, he's about to be 14, I've had five more babies in that time also. So besides growing a business and we are in our 18th year of homeschooling and all of these things, mama's been doing some things. So again, just don't give up on your hopes and dreams. Things can still come back around. There can still be a time. That desire and that seed was just planted in my heart then. And I'll say I struggled but I couldn't quite get back to that because of everything else that was on my plate. And it's such a blessing now to be learning and growing in so many of these areas that I've wanted to for so long. So if I have a massive food preservation day on a Saturday and all of the kids that I have been doing full-time mama all week, right? But now I'm with you in my kitchen and I wanna chat. <laughs> so thank you, let's get to it. Hopes and dreams, my hopes and dreams, your hopes and dreams, it can all pull together. It might take a while, it might take 13 years, and between baby number four and baby number nine, that's okay. You'll get there, I'll get there. I got all kinds of hopes and dreams that don't involve maybe not singing in these spoons, but we're working it, we're on our journey, we're gonna get to where we need to be. We just need to continue to take one step at a time. <sighs> Exhale, let's get cooking. So many of you genius viewers told me with my massive tomato preservation day, turkey baster would be helpful and I didn't have one. So because I am who I am, I got two. And now we will have turkey basters aplenty for upcoming projects, won't we? When they're needed. All right. Yay. Now since getting my bread machines going was a last minute inspiration, I don't have any bananas or anything to be frosted. But as we've done many times, I am taking out some frozen bananas and I'm just gonna get these going in the microwave and start defrosting them down that way a bit. I think first off, we will get these bread machines going. Maybe they will run all day. We will resurrect the bread machine resurrection day. And so there we go. Variety of bananas with stories to tell. I'm just gonna put these in the microwave and we will see how that all works out. And I was just revisiting my banana bread recipe for the bread machine. This video from back in the day is still up here on the channel. I'll link it for you below. Was just going through my recipe. Now this is funny, ha ha, out of milk but that's okay. I do have some containers of the shelf stable milk that I have bought at Dollar Tree. Of course, some people are like so intense on my videos. They're like, Jamrell, you just bought more containers of shelf stable milk at the Dollar Tree here in 2023. But I have other containers that I've had on my shelf that need to be used up now. So that is the milk that I'm going to use in getting this bread in the bread machine today. So, and this is over on my blog, largefamilytable.com. Again, I'll link this recipe down below as well. So we're gonna spray the bread machines. We're gonna add in a cup of milk, a fourth of a cup of oil, and I layer this. We're gonna add in four eggs, but I got some duck eggs I wanna use today. Uh, then we also, one to two cups of mashed bananas. I know that can change the consistency of the bread, but as I shared here, sometimes I've only had one cup. The sugar, sometimes half a cup of brown sugar, half a cup of white. This is the part where I would also add in chocolate chips or walnuts if I was going Going to we're just gonna make it straight this time three cups of flour I've done it with white flour I've done it with whole wheat I've done it half and half then we have baking powder and salt and then always as I had learned with these bread machines is that once the cycle gets spinning I take my little spatula and just scrape around the edges to make sure everything mixes well I don't sit there and stir it just a little scrape alrighty the reality of our microwave bananas it's okay we are doing things here I'll put my camera down and mash these up. I'm just gonna actually use my mixer with them. They will not mix in the bowl that they're in though. That's okay, bananas. 
and waiting for you to serve your purpose. All right, so here's my little setup over here, and no, Travis has not got to switch out that back Lincoln yellow light yet. He did buy the lights for it, so that's our little product fail. We won't pay attention to that though. Anyway, so I have our bananas mixed up here. I have our flour. We have both bread machines. I have my duck eggs. I have some milk from my shelf stable milk stash that we're gonna use up. This is the flour that I'm using. I have some King Author all-purpose flour. Had a little bit left in this bag and then this container of it. And I went ahead and just poured it in this bowl and that's what we'll scoop it out of. Okay, so very first, so I sprayed the bread machines with a nonstick spray. Now I'm gonna add in one cup of milk each. I know for extra fun, we have some lights flickering, but this is where I wanna put my bread machines. Hopeful that we will get through several loaves. That's the way it used to be all the years I ran these bread machines. At one point I had three because I had two I got at the thrift store. So this one I bought new for $49. This one and the other one that's long gone to be with Jesus. They were $2.99 each at the thrift store. So when you see a bread machine at the thrift store, just make sure it's got, I won't take it out now because I have it set, but it's got its little pan and I can get this. And it's got the little dough hook. Oh, although I just, just poured milk in there. There's a little milk flying around for us. And many thrift stores, you can plug things in and test it. Just push some buttons to make sure you hear it. But usually people just get them and then those who don't use them just pass it on the thrift store. It's a great place to get them. And I see them there. I usually go in the thrift store once a month or so. I almost always see at least one bread machine with the little pan and the dough hook for still $2.99. Okay, so fourth of a cup of oil. So once we get these rolling, I'll just clean up a little bit, but leave, you know, the non-perishable stuff out. And I just pour this all in, in layers. So we'll put the eggs and the milk in the fridge. And I guess this bananas too. Then we'll clean up and leave everything else out for us. Okay. Next, four eggs. Okay, so I have duck eggs. And so I believe it's one duck egg equals two chicken eggs. No, I'm sorry. Two duck eggs equal three chicken eggs. Okay, two duck eggs. Let me keep this straight. Two duck eggs is, is three chicken eggs, but I need four eggs. This hurts my brain. Two duck eggs, three eggs. Okay, to make this easier on myself, I'm gonna just get a chicken egg. <laughs> Good thing I'm back in the duck egg and chicken egg business. I like to find creative ways to use my duck eggs. We made for the first time ever, when we did hard boiled eggs, we did duck eggs too. Have you seen that video? It, it's out or it's coming out. They were fantastic. It was just like a jumbo chicken egg, but it was a, okay, okay. Anywho, and so I should behave and crack these eggs into something separate first. Very, very rarely do I get a rotten egg, but if you crack a rotten egg, into a batch with all the other eggs. Well, guess what? That just ruins all the eggs. So I'm so hopeful. Good job, duck egg. Okay. And then I know I'm taking a chance, but you know, the only time I had trouble with eggs and rotten eggs, we had gone to the beach one time and we had folks watching our animals for us, which is wonderful. And there was a big storm and a tree fell. They had a lot of other stuff they were dealing with, so they didn't end up collecting all of our eggs. So when we got home, we had a ton of eggs. So we collected them all, we had buckets full, and mm, things happened. I've got stories, okay? Things happened from that time, um, and it was so, so sad. You don't wanna know what I was cracking in my bowls, okay, okay. That extreme situation is, the major time I had trouble with rotten eggs in all various stages of development. Yeah, but things can happen. You can have an egg that has a little crack and you don't know. I mean, it can be extra porous. Maybe some bacteria got in. Maybe it got rained on that washed off the bloom. Things happen. So anyway, all of these eggs are fine. I'm gonna just pour those in. We're getting, getting back to the swing of things. I would do two or three bread machines at a time to get things rolling. And so I'm just trying to double my steps here. I've already had some kids come in saying, we heard you're making banana bread. They were just so excited. It has been a while. It's been a while since I've done the freezer fruit bread. And you know, those were staples for so many years. So one to two cups of mashed bananas. So 
Ash Bananas. This is your time in life. I'm gonna go ahead, let's do two cups. Extra banana E. of sugar that is something we actually I had someone bring up a storage bucket for me because the only other sugar that we have is here I need to reload my sugar I want to add to my next Azure order to do a 50 pound bag or so of the organic cane sugar let's open up this bucket though and use this sugar now this is one of the buckets that I actually did in 2020 it says yeah July 20 And this is raw cane sugar, 25 pounds from July, 2020. Boy, weren't those good times. Just how mama's gonna move this bucket. That's a cup and a half measuring. We're eyeballing it though and doing a cup. So now it is three cups of flour. I had another family member in here chatting with me, but while we were chatting, I added two teaspoons of baking powder and a teaspoon of salt to each bread machine. Now we'll see if I can remember. I put it on the quick bread cycle a lot. That just seemed easier for me. Okay, the sound we know and love. And then same thing with this one. Oh, I'm gonna have to lean over this a bit to see it. Okay, and with these bananas left, I don't know. It might only be enough for two more loaves. We'll see. We'll put something else in there. And before too much other excitement happens, I do have two freezer meals I had set out for my family for today. Since Mama's doing lots of future cooking today, I wanted to thank my past self, of course, and get these freezer meals out, put them to good use. So that is for today. And I also already have breakfast freezer meals set out for tomorrow morning for those breakfast. Already have breakfast freezer meals set out for tomorrow morning for breakfast before church. That is super. So we have a sausage and broccoli casserole and a cheesy tuna noodle casserole. We will also probably do corn. We'll throw a veggie in a pot and that'll be good. Alrighty, so per request, I asked a kiddo to pick out whatever veggie they wanted and this is what they brought up. And now we'll check in on these bread machines. So this is just where I go in and make sure that everything from the sides is mixing in well. So I don't know if you can hear her or not, but Amelia, she's just so excited that we got the spread machines going again. And I was saying, we've had these her whole life and she's 10. So I definitely got this bread man one way back then. And then this one, she said she remembers we got when she was about five or so. But you remember lots of years and lots of fruit bread, right? It'd be so good to get that in our freezer again too. Now I don't know with the hopefully four to six loaves we get done today, I don't know if anything's gonna actually end up in the freezer, but it will be food preservation for the coming days. But 11 people, these loaves are so precious. They're two pound loaves. They'll just be run through quick though. And also, I'm, I'm here eating my mama lunch. That's a low carb tortilla with some ham and cheese and mayonnaise and mustard in it. But I've been working on the broccoli. But also, I'm gonna use this up whenever we have our freezer meals and our corn because I have several kids that love the carrots and the, I said strawberries, but the carrot sticks and the tomatoes. This is leftover from the homeschool mom's night out evening we had earlier this week. That last piece of broccoli is mine though and we will finish this up, yay. We have a bunch of half pint jars that are gonna go in this dishwasher now. Okay, so working with our Pomona's Universal Pectin. It says prepare calcium water, put half a teaspoon of calcium powder and half a cup of water in a lidded jar. Shake well, we can do that. So here's the little pouch that the calcium powder comes in.
Now it does say recipes can be doubled, tripled, halved, or quartered. Dry or liquid sweeteners that measure like sugar or honey can be used. We're gonna use our raw organic cane sugar that we have. We will be doing probably a cup of sugar for every four cups of mashed fruit. This is two five pound boxes, so 10 pounds of strawberries here. This one, who knows, it was already open and we had already used it for something. I'm gonna dump all this in the bowl. Since my fruit is frozen, I have it in this pot and I'm going to get it cooking down first and then we will be able to mash it from there. I have no idea how much jam these 10, 12 pounds of strawberries will make, but we will find out. Yes, we will. I know there's calculators and such out there, but we're winging it. We'll see. And the bread machines are almost done. Okay, so we have our strawberries going. And I think Travis might have run out to do that errand for me. Maybe that's him back now. I'm like, who's out the window? I think that's him. We're letting the strawberries get going. The bread machine is actually getting close to being done. So that is good. So I'm gonna go ahead, and that's one of the bread machines now yelling at me. I'm gonna go ahead and open up these vanilla beans and we'll start working with these. Okay, these are the Madagascar vanilla beans and it is a 50 pack quantity. These are organic. This is what one looks like. I'm just gonna slice each one down the middle there. Alrighty, so I went and I scored down all of these vanilla beans. We're gonna get them in the bottles now. Okay, Travis went on my errand for me. Let's see here. This is a nice, satisfying project to get done on this day of old days. I believe we're going to be able to make about 10 of these homemade bottles of vanilla. Of course, they're gonna be ready around Christmas time, so might have some that end up as gifts. That would be fun. And so I'm going to do five beans per bottle. I should have 50 beans here. And from what I saw over on Mary's Nest, I watched her video on her perpetual homemade vanilla that she does, and she has a, a jar of it that she'll have going on in the back of her pantry. And every six months or so, she will pour it in a bottle and she'll have vanilla and then she'll just use her beans and do it all again. She also showed that she cut her beans in that video. I will link that for you down in the description below also. All right, so there's our 10 bottles from this one pack of vanilla beans. Travis will be home with the vodka pretty soon here and then we will get that added to the bottles. Okay, so those are ready to go and now it's time for me. I checked the internal temperature and just how my freezer meals were going a little bit ago and I decided they needed about 20 to 30 more minutes. So my timer just went off for that. I'm gonna give them another check. Then we will mash up our fruit and then do another check-in on the bread machine bread. Temperature wise, these are fine. I'm going to remove the foil and actually put them down on the lower rack. And I also put my oven on low bake just to help finish cooking the tops since I'm busy doing 
several other projects. I don't want to do my famous trick of leaving something in the oven for too long. They're both like 170, 180 internal temperature. Just want to cook the tops a bit. I'm not cooking the face here. Okay, I just used the immersion blender here on these strawberries. All right, and all the Canyon Wisdom is for most recipes. You're not doubling or tripling or doing any of that. I have the directions here though from them on doing a triple batch and I'm broken so it's hard. Again, this is the Pomona's Fruit Pectum. And I did do a strawberry honey jam with them last summer. I do have more than a triple batch in here, of course. Each batch is four cups of mashed fruit, and then you can do half a cup to a whole cup of honey, or three quarters of a cup to two cups of sugar. Sliding scale, you can pick your sweetness in there. So what I'm gonna do is four cups, three times. So we're gonna do 12 cups of the mashed strawberries. And then I'm going to do, of course the bread machine's gonna talk to us, I'm going to do one cup of the raw organic sugar per four cups, so that'll be three cups total. Okay, so we need to do that. Now, this particular recipe for strawberry jam does not also call for lemon juice. So, two and a half cups. Okay, there's another two cups, so it's four and a half. says for each four cups I need to do two teaspoons of calcium water so I'll be doing six total stir that well now I did do the six teaspoons or that would be two whole tablespoons I was just chatting with another family member for a moment. Alrighty, so Amelia just got three cups of the sugar in here. Now we are gonna do two tablespoons of their pectin powder, and that's because it calls for two teaspoons of the pectin powder per batch, and we are doing a triple batch. I'm just covering this bottle with a towel because Brands and brand names can be a funny thing. I don't know. Let's make everything as confusing as possible. But anyway, Travis got the goods. Now, there's also recipes online. I have not thoroughly studied them all. But you can do this without alcohol. So if I remember, I will try to link some of those below for you also. Okay, our strawberry jam was boiling. I'm going to pour this in. I have my 10 year old here who's gonna stir it for us for two minutes. Okay, so I'm going to take this one out. Just let it cool on the cutting board. This is the trials of me trying to hold my camera while I'm cooking and doing projects. All right. That's, that's the timer going off for the jelly. Then we'll come back to this loaf of banana bread here in a few minutes. I also got the corn going for dinner. All right, so here's all 10 bottles filled up. Okay, we got our first official loaf of banana bread cooling.
So the first loaf is being consumed as dessert, basically, with tonight's dinner, but it's been so long, Tobin's never even had banana bread. You're welcome, baby, he said. Thank you, Bobby, he was really excited about it, though. And so we'll add this second loaf somewhere, too. Okay, we've been having a dinner party in here called Kids Eating Dinner on a Saturday night. I'm going to de-bubble my jam here. I have our next batch of strawberries going. I'm gonna go ahead, this is 11 half pints. And then it seems like I got 12 half pints out of the four cups of mashed strawberries and the amount of strawberry jam that we made. So that is good. I'm gonna go ahead and put these in the canner and then the others will be following. I really wanted to do jam in pint jars. Last time I did it, I did half pint jars also. I think I did 12, it was 12 to 24 half pints. I'm hoping today, because we have those blackberries also and then a few other miscellaneous berries over there, I'm hoping to end up with 48 half pints or so. My kids love it. The reason there's only 11 here, we have one that they, some of them were having on their banana bread for their dessert. So anyway, I'm not going to wait until all the jam is done to run this. It needs to run 10 minutes, I believe. Boil 10 minutes, add one minute more for every 1,000 feet above sea level. So mine will run for 11 minutes here. This water's warmed up. I'm just gonna let this sit and we will do this next batch of jam quickly and then we'll run both batches together. Each box of the Pomona's pectin says it does about 22 or so half pint jars, so that's good. Alrighty, so I added in the calcium water. I am now shuring, shuring, shuring and stirring the pectin in with the sugar. Got a little assembly line going here. So that is good, and now it has to be stirred for one to two minutes. My 10 year old was in here and wanted to help with some jam earlier. So now I am doing this batch. We're getting through it. So we got two loaves of bread machine, banana bread, done. One loaf is eaten, the other loaf is sliced, and once that cools, I will get that in a bag in the refrigerator. And I do plan to, coming up, let's get two more loaves going. Then we got 10 bottles of homemade vanilla going. I wrote up some cute little labels for those. We're gonna stick those on there here shortly. And then next up, I need to wash out this pot from the strawberries, but we will get our blackberries cooking for some blackberry jam. And then I think after this, we will get the kumbacha going because that's one of those projects that feels like a nice easy win. You can do that too. I do have my bread pans soaking from my bread machine. So probably go ahead and let water start getting in this pot too. This, this pot here for our next batch of jam. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this Amish water bath canner. I have one of my teens here washing some dishes for me and I'm going to go lay flat out on the floor for about 20 minutes or so. Let me get that on there. And then I've shared in other videos, this will flatten out as everything heats up in here. We're gonna let this run, wash some things up, then we'll get going with our next round. Okay, so I had my little allotted mama rest break. I'm getting the blackberry jam going now. Here's my little homemade vanilla signs that we, well, they're little stickers. We'll put those on our vanilla bottles too. So I'm gonna use 10 pounds of these blackberries and then I'm gonna use 
this little bit of the mulberries that we had left from last summer and mix those in too. Alrighty, so that's our last half pint of strawberry jam. I have the blackberries going on the stove and continuing to visit those and stir those up. Let's get two more loaves of banana bread breads going in the bread machine. Okay, I was just looking at those blackberries and I think they're ready for me to use the immersion blender on them. So. I just throw out project ideas and don't worry, we're doing it. We're getting through it, right? Well, might not be really. Oh, that's fun. Hold on, I've got to dig under my oven now. That's fun. That's all fun. How's it going to go? Are you going to work for me? I don't want to manhandle it too much. I wonder if my commercial letter's not going to work now. It's from some, it's such a simple fall. Is it plugged in? It is. Okay, two buttons, two hands right now. moment well family's fed everybody's uh gone to do their evening activities now so we have because i'm doing the triple batch i will just have these directions be my next shirt i will do the two tablespoons of the calcium water again i'm using this pectin because it's a lower sugar amount I need just a little bit more there I can tell okay you don't need as much sugar when you use this then this one needs lemon juice so for four cups it would be a fourth of a cup of lemon or lime juice so we have tripled this so that'll be three quarters of a cup of lemon juice and then what else do I need well that's the very next thing so let me get that now I'll see how my kids like this that's the, the nice thing about doing the half pints, although I know they're just gonna, they gobbled up the strawberry honey berry jam I made last time, but with the blackberry jam, it has some amount of seeds in it. Now I can run these, or I could have run them through the food mill, so we'll just see with this batch if it, you know, affects anyone in any negative ways in life. And all the moms with kids said amen, right? Okay, I just debubbled these. These are my last six half pints of the blackberry jam. I believe we're getting 20 or 21 half pints. I will count again here in a moment, but I'm just getting these rooms here with vinegar, fourth of an inch head space. I do have a family member in here popping popcorn with us. Late night snack time. It may look like I put these lids on tighter than I do, but I'm, I'm not putting them on tight. Finger tight. And because these are wide mouth jars, I think I got 15 or so. Is that right? 15 or 18, it's all running together. I got the bottom of this Amish canner full, but these are wide mouth. So they took up more room. So there's this additional rack that layman's offered that I got. And that makes a second layer here. A small win that I can have is to put these stickers on this vanilla. 
really nice. So let's see, are they perforated? They are. And I just wrote homemade vanilla. I wrote the month and the year that I made it. I know that these, I was reading about homemade vanilla. It says it can have a five to 10 year shelf life. So I was joking with my 10 year old that she might take a bottle of this homemade vanilla to her first apartment, ha ha. We will see though. I might be making this every year. I know there are definitely times in baking and projects where I'm just running through the store-bought vanilla. I really have no idea how much I need and how much we use. But let's figure that out. Quick cleanup break here. This pot is amazing. <laughs> so, I'm gonna get that soaking again. I did have a kiddo bring one of these carts up. So many of you have told me I needed to get like, you know, the Rubbermaid kitchen cart or some kind of wonderful kitchen cart. I would love to, I haven't even searched for one yet, but I do have these school carts, which I figured would also be helpful. So, that here ready to go. Okay. Some of these things we washed and then we haven't used yet. There is some blackberry nasty so give these another wash. We do have a gallon jar here. Just, just the outside that needed more gallons, but I had this soaking as well. We do our solution in there. Back to that. These are actually clean. We need to use that. Wipe that a little bit up. Find little blackberry surprises for a bit. Wood machines going again. All the kids were reminiscing at different times their memories of these bread machines. And Tobin was so cute saying, banana bread, thank you mommy. Thank you mommy, banana bread. I don't think he's ever had banana bread. He's going to be two. From when I'm filming this, he'll be two in one week. And uh, yeah, Mom, mama has been all for banana bread game, but that's okay. Mama can make a comeback, right? <laughs> I got the water bath canner. It is boiling. I got my timer set for that. Got two timers going. Did I get that other timer set? I did. Make me feel like I'm losing my mind. Timer set on the microwave. Okay. So, back to my blog post. Okay, the one cup of milk. The one thing I did not get out yet. If my bread doesn't look done or doesn't look quite done or still might be a little soft in the middle, things happen. Both of these bread machines, I can turn them off and they both have an additional just bake setting. I think this one has its time set on 30 minutes additional and this one does it in 10 minute additional increments. Um, let's see here. Okay, so four eggs. So we are going to do two duck eggs and one chicken. I'm gonna be wild. Oh, how's it gonna go? Okay, good, made it. One, two. The hesitation is just duck eggs are thicker than chicken eggs there to peel them apart. My ducks, they are prolific layers. We only have, we have two girls and one male. I just feel like we're getting duck eggs every day. And ducks don't always they don't lay as often as chickens. Oh, I just dropped a shell in there. Now that's what I get. That's what I get for being a smart mouth. That might be some child's horror. Ha ha, duck egg shell and the banana bread. I don't see it now. I couldn't feel it. I know I have eggs on my hands. What's next though? The mashed bananas. That's what I was thinking. If it's the mashed bananas, I wash my hands quite yet. So I'll finish this up and then I'll wash my hands. Just enough bananas for these last two loaves. Okay, now I'll wash my hands real quick. Alrighty. Cup of sugar. I mean, it's been a while. I don't remember who likes walnuts and who doesn't. This will certainly be one way to weed them out. But they might all love it. 
Want it? Still tastes good. Yeah. Okay, so we got our evening tea. I got a few more projects I want to try to pull together here and get done. We, uh, we also need to unload that blackberry jam, but I have this little kit from Water Kefir. So in the past, I've gotten my kefir grains from Cultures for Health, and I've also gotten my SCOBY from Ferment Holics. Um, I had also picked up this kefir cap. It's supposed to be homemade kefir brewing lids. I'm supposed to be able to use it for every step of the kefir process. I'm going to get these going again though just in a mason jar because I'm so tired this confuses me at this time of night. So tonight will just be part of the step. We need to activate the grains again. So by the end of these little steps it's going to take three days and in three days the grains should be plump and translucent and activated and ready for the next step which will be to actually make the water Keeper. First up, we're going to prepare some sugar water by combining, it says half a cup of hot water and a fourth of a cup of sugar. Allow sugar to dissolve and add three cups of cool water, so we'll do that first. While this sugar, sorry, I was pointed on the other side of the camera. While this sugar is dissolving, we will get working here on the kombucha. So it's bring two cups of water to boil and remove from heat. I already have water heated up in my kettle. So we will pour two cups of that kettle water in a little pot. And then I have these tea bags. I'm doing green tea with it this time. I did black tea my other time. I will get those seeping for about five to 10 minutes. And look, we found my original gallon jar that had the thermometer on it. I just wanna show you the date because we're so close to it being exactly a year from when I did this first go round. Uh, 411, but I started it in 2022. And like I say, I did several rounds with it and bottled my own, but I never took the date off of there. And I just noticed, hey, almost one year anniversary. Okay, so my goal, I, I wanted my hopes and dreams for today, or for tonight now, is that we would end with 48 half pints between the strawberry jam and the blackberry jam. And so the grand finale is we ended up with 44. So we have 23 of our strawberry jam half pints and we have, what did I say, 21 of the blackberry half pints. I like these cute little jars here. And then we also, we had a half pint of jam that the kids devoured with the banana bread for the most part. So anyway, yes, if all of this batch goes well, we will definitely can in the pint jars next time. But this is a fun effort. So 44 half pints total. Okay, so I've left these tea bags in for 10 minutes now. I'll just pull these out. Now it calls for a cup of sugar to be dissolved. I just added three cups of cool water to the jar. And then these are all the keeper grains that I'm going to add in here. And then it says, it says empty entire packet of dehydrated water keeper grains into the room temperature sugar water. It says cover with a coffee filter or cloth secured by a rubber band and let grains rehydrate for three days at room temperature. After three days, let me let me look at you while I'm reading to you. Story time with Jamrell. After three days, grains should be plump and translucent. They're activated and ready to make kefir. Strain out the grains and discard the sugar water. Okay, I just added cool water to this gallon jar now. Now we'll add the SCOBY here. And it is in this little sealed pouch. Actually, it's a pouch within a pouch. Oh, it's a new one. I miss my old one. <laughs> anyway, so here's what it looks like. 
remember when it came with pH strips, I had bought some also. So there you go, I got a few more. Now I'm just going to cut this open. It's usually traveling in some fermented kombucha already. Just pour it all in. Now I will add some more cool water to here. Okay, hopefully it is happy with me. Like I say, I've never done the green tea bags. Should not make a difference. I was just looking at the temperature on the side. So I'm just going to use a paper napkin. I will make it pretty thin there. It does need to be kept warm. That's why last time I had it on top of my dryer. But this stove is pretty busy. So I'm gonna put it by my stove for now. I don't know how long it'll be able to live by my stove. I do have a rooster picture there now. Maybe I'll have to <laughs> drag the rooster picture for my kombucha. Um, I have some cutting boards there. Well, anyway, for tonight. I don't have to make any other decisions tonight, but I can put this in its honorary place. No, 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 wait. Forgot to take its pH reading. Last time with the other brews that I did, I never had to do this, but it says pH should be below 4.5. If it is not, add one tablespoon of distilled white vinegar, which you know we always buy in bulk, and then test again. Secure the coffee filter or thin napkin, Jamero. Over the opening of the jar of the rubber band, place in a warm area between 75 and 85. Cold temperatures are almost always the cause of mold issues. Remember, cold equals mold. So, anyway. It says that our batch should be, I'm just reading it again, at or below 4.5. So this is looking like 3.5 to me. All right, this is under the green flickering light. Ha ha, this is where they will at least live for now. Needs to be pretty warm for them, so this should be a pretty warm corner. This is the project I'm gonna give up on for this evening. This will just have to be another upcoming video, but mama's not gonna do it tonight. Well, hello friends. Mm-hmm. I, I hear ya, you'll be next. Everyone get in line Sunday after church. We are gonna cook up today those little Costco pizzas. I don't know, I got two boxes of them in a recent grocery haul. There we go, dinner's done. I thought our food preservation video was done. But anyway, today we're going for bonus points. Woo! Are you eating your homemade whoopie pie? You are. So we went into the John Henry General store on the way home from church because deals, deals. And my joke, we pledge allegiance to Sharp Shopper, we pledge allegiance to the John Henry General store. They said yesterday that they had one of their shoppers was from New York and she stopped by because she's heard me talk about him in one of my videos, so that is super fun. Anyway, you won't believe the deal on strawberries. It burns and I'm like, we can do 40 more pounds of strawberries. Oh yes, we can. I'll show you the price. I got kids in the kitchen. We got lunch stuff happening, but we're going for bonus points. Bonus canning rounds. All the jars are out. They are clean. Everything's here. Happy Sunday afternoon. And also weather report. What in the world? Okay, so now, um, yeah. <laughs> Which is great. We've hardly had any snow. It's 37. I don't think this is going anywhere, even though it's, piling up on my eyelashes, but I do like looking out the windows and seeing it. Another little treat for today. Oh boy, and I just opened this package from Baker Creek Seeds. I will be doing a whole other seed haul, fun extravaganza video, but look at that, good stuff. But daylight savings time, mm -hmm. that's something I forgot about last night. Thought I was going to bed at midnight and I was going to bed at 1 a.m. It's the second big cup of, big mama cup of coffee day. But see, the snow is pretty out the window there. Yay. Also, here's the other two loaves of banana bread. So we did four loaves total. So what ended up happening is when I had the last two loaves in the bread machines, I still had quite a bit of time. And I had the kitchen all cleaned up, ready to go to bed. I didn't want to let these sit in the bread machine all night. So I actually, don't try this at home folks, I actually took the little containers out of the bread machines and I went ahead and put these in the refrigerator. And then this morning, I put them back in and let them finish baking. So I don't know, was that right, was that wrong, who could know it, but here's the final two loaves and these are the banana walnut loaves. I'm gonna actually cut 
these slices in half because they're so big. And then that's, I'm reusing that bag. That was our second loaf. Remember they ate one loaf after dinner last night. This other loaf has disappeared today. So these two, I think between Monday and Tuesday, they'll be gone, but at least they like them and that's a mama win. And then this deal on strawberries. Okay, let's, let's just talk about this. So these flats of strawberries, you're just not gonna believe it. Okay, we have to get into some strawberry math. And I am on daylight savings time, tired mom brain, so be gentle with me. These are a dollar a pack. They're a pound a pack. Last time they had this deal, and this, my kids were already eating them, and that's just fine. That's what they're here for also. And then they had some other deal where I don't know. What was it, Trav? We got ended up getting five flats for like $32. They marked it down even more, so it was less than a dollar a pound. It was something like that. Something good. It. That deal is trash, okay? It's trash compared to today's deal. So today's deal, help me with this, tired mom brain. They ended up being 50 cents a pack. Okay, because I have tired mom brain, I had to come over here and get a little help. Don't pay any attention to the whoopie pie I bought for $2.99. That was for Tobin because he couldn't have the candy treat. And I got all my other kids these little sour button candy treats that were expensive compared to these strawberries, but it was a little candy treat after church, okay? The strawberries, five flats, eight pounds of flat, 40 pounds of strawberries for $24.95. When I divide the 24.95 down, 95 divided by, we had five flats. $4.99 a flat divided by eight packs of flat, 62 cents a pack. Okay, I just, what? How could I not go on to make some more bonus jam? And in anticipation, because I know I only have one pack of the Pomona's left, I sent Travis to Walmart to get this Sure Gel. We ended up with, I think we got 12 packs here. Let's see, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. And by my math, I'm gonna need 10 of these boxes. I wrote out the math while I was here with that second cup of coffee. I just, I will save you from that. But when you see all of this Sure Gel, just know I'm using all of them, but two, two will go on my shelf. The other 10 we're gonna use. And so we are going to process these strawberries, but I have decided already I'm not going on full afternoon inspiration. I am being sensible, Jay Morrell. I'm gonna go now, get my shower, get my pajamas on, and cozy up and watch some afternoon movies today because that was my original plan. But I just get 69 cents a pound strawberry inspirations and so many of my kids are so excited to do their own big batch of homemade strawberry jam. So what I've decided is tomorrow for our school, we will be processing about 30 pounds of these strawberries. I figure, because again, they're already eating them. We've just had so many strawberries lately because of this amazing deal. So yeah, uh, and these say that they're Florida strawberries. So awesome, thank you, Florida strawberries. So I figure we will keep, I think they already ate two pounds this afternoon. Yes, okay, because there's another box missing from another one, okay. So I think we'll probably keep five to eight pounds. Again, the kids will tell me how many pounds of strawberries they're going to eat. I won't tell the kids. But tomorrow for school, we will do mega math food processing school and we will process this 30 pounds of strawberries and that will be our math for the day. We will still have our afternoon read aloud, still do Civil Air Patrol and our other fun things too. But right now, this mama is saying, okay, plot twist. Rest time. Well, happy another day to the massive food preservation day video that now I'm just continuing to show you some food preservation projects that are trickling throughout this week. Last evening, my younger kids and I worked on de-pitting those cherries and we processed probably, and I want to say processed, you know, we, we capped about 15 pounds of strawberries and then it was like this continual beeping. I wonder what that is. Is that an alarm somewhere? I think that's our dishwasher. And a bunch of my teens had a long activity last night that Travis took them to. So we got a start on this. Now today, the cherries are done. The strawberries are now done. And actually we had two cases of mango. These are what is left. They're actually, they're very soft. They're very sweet. I know they could have waited another week or so, but we're going ahead 
chopping them down, processing them, getting them ready. The kids are eating all the mangoes that they want and we're feeding our mango skins to our pigs. They're not complaining. Again, it was two full trays like this. But we're gonna freeze dry all the pieces that are left after chopping and eating and processing. And all of my kiddos love freeze dried mangoes. I got a bunch for just a wild deal this fall. A whole bunch of them that were overripe, but I was, but we were able to chop them down, freeze dry those, and they gave us four of the really big, what is that, half gallon mason jar, four of those full of freeze dried mangoes. Those have been long eaten. Right now the kids are working through apples and also freeze dried strawberries in our and I, use, and I use my large capacity Harvest Right freeze dryer to freeze dry all of this food, which is super helpful. So also, while we got all the chopping going, we're getting these mangoes and we're gonna get those going through the freeze dryer too. Alrighty, so this is my 30 quart pot, and this is the, mm, well remember I bought, it was 40 pounds of strawberries, and the kids ate a couple packs. So we're somewhere between 30 and 35 pounds of strawberries. I'm going to cook these down in this 30 quart pot. We'll use the immersion blender on it, just like we did on what is now our smaller batch. But I have a good vision now on how, you know, I still want to follow the rules and break it down for the amount per recipe, but I still have a lot to cook at one time. So I'm going to get this cooked down and then I will just, I will scooch this pot over a little bit. I'll move this pot up mm -hmm. and then I'll measure out the proper amount of crushed strawberries per batch. So this is my big batch jam processing, learning and batch cooking and all of that, working out our systems to do this, okay? So we'll scooch this over, we'll bring this pot up, we'll measure out batch from batch and go from there. I'm um, Also, I need to go ahead and get my cherries going too. It was like five to seven pounds of cherries. I'll probably get those cooking down on this back burner here. And also, the kombucha that we did the other day, uh, my temperature was still reading like 68 and that that's too cold. So I wrapped it in a towel, but I hope that with, you know, getting the stove going and stuff today, it'll really warm up over here. And I also got my sourdough starter going again last night. And then also, all things being used, we just dumped a big bowl of mango pigs to, mango pigs, yeah, mango skins to the pigs and they do not mind. Okay, so here is how much the strawberries cooked down. You know it was like an overflowing pot full. Let me set my lid in my sink. I've got my immersion blender. We're going to blend these up now and the cherries are still cooking down. Now this tile backsplash has been christened many times. Just showing you, <laughs> yeah, it happened again, but it really wipes up well, believe me, uh, I've tested it. <laughs> and our little kombucha temperature is up to 72 now, so that's good. Alrighty, it's been a while. <laughs> we almost have the Amish water bath canner full. It's getting up there. We have the second layer started. This is how, this is the last of the strawberry jam. So I've been doing it in six cup batches. We've worked through all that pectin. I've got four boxes left after the pectin for this batch. Just, we've been having fun. We've actually wiped down several times, but this is where we fill the jars. So that's why it looks like a strawberry massacre on the stove. Things clean up though, so that is nice. So I'm getting this batch, I need to get it boiling again. And then I will add in a fourth of a cup of sugar and this low sugar pectin. Now, and you can't read the full box there. Um, I'll show you the other box, but anyway, it's the doo -doo 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 -doo. Well, now I feel like I need to show you the full box. Um, there you go. 
for use in less or no sugar needed recipes. So I am following the recipe pack that came with this pectin for this strawberry jam. Let's see here, cooked jam recipes, and I am following their doo -doo 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 -doo, strawberry recipes, which for each batch calls for six cups of crushed strawberries and four cups of sugar, and you end up with about eight cups. Anyway, and we're doing it in pint jars. We've been working through this this afternoon. I combine the fourth of a cup of sugar and then the one pack of the pectin. We then bring that to a rolling boil. Then we add in the remaining sugar and then yeah, get it into jars and go through the whole process for there. So it is quite a bit more sugar that I had to use compared to the Pomona's. I will definitely, I can get that it from Azure and I'm going to load up on Pomona's pectin, but I am glad that Walmart had at least these in stock and I was able to get 10 of them for all the batches that I'm doing. So that's good. And I didn't buy them out. They still had more. So that all is nice. And I got 18 pints on the bottom of my Amish canner. And like I say, we're doing our second row now. The cherries have been crushed and are wait ready and waiting. I use the immersion blender on it. Oh, you saw that. You saw that because I still haven't cleaned that part of my stove. Several of the kids have taken a turn and have had a lot of fun in doing this jam. So there's our little, <laughs> our little ladle proof. And that was just the last little bit that was left from the last batch. I will add from this batch and we'll stir it all together and debubble it and all of those happy things. Don't know if that's right or wrong, but that's me just using every little, every little bit, right? So that is good. And so this whole 30 quart stock pot, which was once they were cooked down and we used the ablution blender, uh, it was about 15 quarts of cooked strawberries. And with all of these pots, our kombucha has come up to 74 degrees. So hopefully that makes it happier. Alrighty, so I had a live call with my membership community this evening. I did not get to the cherry jam yet. I'm gonna just have to put those cherries in the fridge and maybe tomorrow I will try again to get back to that project. See, this is how real life projects work. But we did this afternoon and this evening, we processed 30 pints of the strawberry jam. And then I also had a kiddo helper label all of the strawberry jam and the blackberry jam for us. These are all ready to go in the ready to go for the pantry. And then tomorrow night we will take the rings off and label all of these strawberry jams. But there's the little size comparisons with the pints and the half pints. They love it, no problem. So I'm glad we were able to add in this 62 cent a pound, right? Strawberry deal. We'll just see how the cherry jam goes after this. Also, it's a work in progress. I sprayed it with my vinegar spray. Made sense of the stove again. We saved it from the strawberry jam processing, but it handled it well. Tile handled it good. We did things. Now it's, you know, we're winding down to bedtime. <laughs> Well friends, thank you so much for watching my food preservation day that then turned into this food preservation day and then multiple days food preservation bonus points. <laughs> we made great use out of those 62 cents a pound. Sing the hallelujah chorus with me, strawberry deals. I will be wrapping up that cherry jam and I'll show it to you in another video. Thank you again so much for watching. If you enjoyed all of these food preservation projects with me, I'll pop up some more videos here in a moment so you can keep on watching if that's what you like. Again, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate you hanging out with me. I'll chat with you in those comments below and I'll see you real soon with another brand new video. Bye bye.
was just thinking about the, I was just thinking about, okay, let me put my hair like this. I was just thinking about the, the routines I got out in, no, nope. in today's mat, for today's massive food prep, I am here reading the direction pack. I'm here reading the, I am here, I am here and I'm gonna be reading through my directions. Right. I'm gonna, we are also going to use my giant and, and my. So I just wanted to, so I just wanted to take a moment to say all the, 